Yo, yo, yo. What up, Ferret? What up, Davey? What's up, everybody? Happy Tuesday, man. Um, hope everybody's day's going well so far. Uh, we got uh, video gaming news for today, August 29th. Man, August is almost done, dude. This year is flown by. Holy crap, dude. Um, and not that it's over, but man, uh, summer is uh, kind of coming to a close here, dude, uh, as we move into more of an autumn time frame. Yeah, it's crazy, dude. And uh, as fast as it goes, dude, it'll, uh, before we know it, man, we'll be creeping upon uh, 2024, man. It's, it's kind of kind of wild how fast it goes. I guess time flies when you're having fun. You know what I'm saying? Uh, gonna miss the light. Dude, I like the dark. <laughs> I like the dark, dude. I love overcast days and stuff like that. So the, the, I, I like the darkness, dude. I'm one with the darkness. <laughs> but yeah, I get that. I hear that. I think the thing for me is like, uh, I enjoy, I enjoy all of it. I like, I like having seasons, you know, I like having seasons. I've lived, uh, places where you don't get to have all the seasons and man, it, it's really a bummer when that happens. Um, oh yeah. Well, yeah, that's understandable. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's my big thing. Like, uh, living in places where you don't really get to experience, uh, seasons, uh, you know, like all four seasons and stuff is, uh, something that really bums me out, dude. Um, I'm, I'm definitely much more, I think, uh, autumn or fall is, is like my favorite, uh, actually season of the year. So we're moving into that time frame That's like kind of my favorite, man. I love it. I love it. It's a, it's a cool time of the year. So, uh, I'm excited, but you know, it'll be, it'll go fast. It always does, man. And then we'll be getting into those winter weather see, uh, uh, days, you know what I mean? Uh, they're, they're coming up quick, man. Um, oh yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. And what was the, uh, they already had some of them on there, Davey. We're, uh, we'll probably hit on some of it this morning. <clears throat> it's good to see you guys. Oh yep, yeah, Yep. Yeah. Uh, probably because it had a, like a release time of like, um, it was probably set for a worldwide release time of like the 29th, meaning that it hit Australia on the 29th and hit the rest of the world, uh, kind of on the, uh, brink of the 29th or the end of the, uh, 28th. You know what I mean? That's kind of the way that'll work quite often. Um, that's why that, that it's a way that they circumvent the, um, the whole changing of time frames on console. That's always been an issue. Oh, it's free. Sick dude. Nice. There you go, dude. Awesome. Awesome. Great, great, great. Yeah. I thought I figured, uh, you know, it, it was supposed to be part of uh, subscription services and everything. So yeah, that's awesome. Man. Um, but, uh, sometimes you'll see, uh, companies do that. So everybody gets the game released at the same time, as opposed to um, it being something where other parts of the country or other parts of the world anyways, will will do things like change the time zone of their console to match the earlier parts of the world, like uh, New Zealand and Australia and stuff like that, so that they can get earlier access to the game. You know what I mean? It's weird. It's weird that that's still something that happens actually, but you know, that's cool, man. Did you already start playing it? Let's go ahead and, uh, let's go ahead and dive into this, uh, video gaming news segment. What do you guys say? Let's do this, man. August 29th, man. Jesus. I got to start working on my, uh, Halloween costume, dude. <laughs> Kill the music. Let's get in here, man. Let's do this. Uh, let me, uh, preface this before we dive in here to the, the new segment again, I'm just like announcing this all the time right now, but I will not take tomorrow off. Tomorrow will not be a day off as it normally would be. I normally take Wednesdays off tomorrow. I will not take off. Uh, we will be live tomorrow, but I will only be doing about a five and a half to six hour stream probably on Friday. And, um, then the stream will not be live 
Saturday, Sunday, or Monday. Okay, so don't forget that. Let's go ahead and dive in here. Let's do this. Um, uh, looks like we got some uh, boosty weekends for D4. We'll take a quick peek. Yeah, yeah, we're doing like a little end of summer kind of uh, thing, family thing, dude. So I'm going to take a, a few days off and uh, just relax, eat way too much food, I'm sure. Um, it'll be nice. It'll be nice. It's always weird to take time off. You know what I mean? It really is. Um, I, I love doing this, dude. I love doing what I do and uh, taking any kind of uh, time off, especially extended uh consecutive days off feels weird, but, um, occasionally it's nice to just kind of have that as a bit of a reset, you know? Yeah. Details on the first early access patch for Starfield. Take a quick peek. That's about to hit. This is probably a gaming Bible. No, 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 thanks. I don't like gaming Bibles site, dude. Uh, just Oh no, dude, we might have to click on one of theirs though. Starfield performance leak is bad news for PC gamers. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh, Escape from Tarkov will share progress with Arena spinoff, huh? Interesting. Just a tiny bit, yeah? Yeah, I know you're maining Divinity right now, yeah. Uh, eh, Jesus, whatever. We already got one up. Why not another one? Gaming Bible. I don't like this site, man. They're real clickbaity. Yeah, Microsoft uh, just got rid, you know, a few months ago, they got rid of the $1 Game Pass deal. And then about a month, month and a half later, they brought it back. And now before the Starfield release, they dropped it again. You know? They know a lot of people are going to be buying. I mean, it's the same reason they raised prices. They know there are a ton of people are going to be buying into Game Pass. Um, so they want to make as much money off of that as they can. So, I don't know. We already talked about the new uh, Snapdragon G series uh, processors and stuff. We already talked about that. Modern Warfare 3, what you need to know. Uh, the game is dropping on November 10th. Uh, the beginning of October or when betas hit. The first weekend is going to be PlayStation only. The uh, following weekend, is, or the weekend after that, will be multi-platform, okay? All of your Modern Warfare 2 purchases and stuff are going to transfer over to Modern Warfare 3 as well. So, that's cool. If you're a fan of Call of Duty, that's what you really need to know. It's coming to you fairly quickly. We talked about this yesterday also. I actually included a link yesterday. But Razer has um, announced and unveiled and released their Xbox edition of the Kishi V2 mobile gaming controller, which basically is just something that snaps onto your mobile device and turns it into a, uh, a basically, it, it, it's a controller wrap for your, your mobile device. And this is the Xbox-ish version of their, um, their Kishi. So um, it's out there. It's about $120, if I remember correctly. Comes with a month of Game Pass Ultimate as well. 
$120 for a controller. I don't, this seems like a bit much to me. I don't know. I mean, to eat, eat, everybody's going to have a, a different view on that. Um, I know it's not just a con traditional controller. The fact that it, it snaps onto a mobile device and everything, but it is also just a controller. <laughs> so I don't know. Razer has traditionally, uh, you know, they've, they've made products that have always seemed quite overpriced in my opinion. Um, not that they might, uh, not produce some some good products or whatever but i mean razor has always just seemed like a company that has had some products that that are quite expensive so i don't know i don't know what a lot of the other uh comparable products from maybe some other reputable manufacturers are, are uh going for though in in that same realm you know of like mobile uh, snap on controllers and stuff, but, uh, hundred and hundred and twenty dollars, man. It's a, it's a chunk of change for a, a, uh, controller in my opinion. Yep. Um, yeah, this is, we talked about this yesterday as well. The darkness uh, is potentially getting a remaster. Yeah. Um, Jesus, it's the uh, the company that just got bought by Atari. Why can't I think of their name? They they, they basically specialize in remaster and remaking. Um, they just did the uh, System Shot game. Who is this, dude? I can't think of their name. Where are they, dude? Night Dive. Night Dive. Night Dive Studios. Yeah, so uh, they, they're kind of teasing that uh, they are going to be remastering uh, The Darkness, which is pretty cool. Pretty neat. But we touched on it yesterday, so I'm not going to deep dive into that. Just know that uh, that's something they're talking about doing. Nope, nope, gaming Bible, get wrecked. Looks like Starfield has now uh, taken over Boulder's Gate 3 as Steam's top seller. I mean, that, that kind of makes sense right now. There's a lot of anticipation about Starfield. We're getting really close to the release. The, pr the early release is happening in like two days. Um, so... That and that the uh, standard release is uh, just over a week away. It's a very uh, hyped up game, very anticipated from Bethesda. So um, we knew it was going to be a, a, a big deal. And, and uh, I don't necessarily, I mean, I, I don't. I don't personally see it being as big overall as Baldur's Gate 3. But I guess that depends on how well Bethesda did with it, you know? If it's just blowing people away, like Baldur's Gate 3 did, then, you know, it does absolutely have that potential. There's enough hype around it, that's for sure. The difference being, we kind of knew Baldur's Gate 3 was going to be huge out of how long the early access was, how well Larian was doing with the, the early access development. And there'd been a lot of good talk and, and understanding about what the game was going to entail for a long time, even though it was limited in your uh, being what you could experience of the game. Um, people knew that Baldur's Gate 3 was going to be great. People don't quite know whether, you know, what to expect out of Starfield overall, right? So um, there's a little bit of a difference here. But it it is just as hyped up. There are a lot of Bethesda fans out there, man. That's for sure.
Death or Glory. A unique blend of CCG and fighting games. Let's take a look at that. We already talked about this too, yeah. There's an end of summer Xbox sale going on right now. Um, you can look at the Microsoft store and the X, you know, the Xbox store. There's a, a lot of sales going on, so take a look if you're interested. I, I don't know if the Am there was there was a huge Amazon sale going on as well across all console platforms where there were a ton of games that were on sale and, and there it was there were a ton of games that were available for a buy one get one free promotion. So um I don't know if it's still live or not, but the the Amazon sell was pretty significant. You don't often see the buy one, get one free. Most often it's a buy two, get one free. So you might still be in the running to get in on that. You just are going to have to go take a look. There have been a lot of sales here recently. Um, here's the free Epic game right now. Homeworld, Deserts of Karak. You got two days left on this. And then it'll be Cave Story Plus. Okay, so get your free games. It's a no brainer, dude. Go do it. All right, fair. They've already been doing this. The Samsung <clears throat> Samsung Gaming Hub originally uh, was rolling out with the last year with the 2022 TVs. They're 2022 smart TV models, almost all of them. But they started making it to where uh, the 2021 models we're incorporating it with updates. Um, the models that had good enough tech in them, and now we're seeing where they've already they've been rolling it out to like uh, 2020 models and everything too. So they're they're going backwards with previous generation, uh, previous year models of their TVs to to see which ones have powerful enough technology in them to uh, utilize, be able to incorporate the Samsung Gaming Hub, which is basically a uh their own technology of being able to allow owners consumers to access um specific gaming streaming streaming platforms through the smart tv application gaming hub um where all you basically have to do is plug in a controller that's it or a peripheral device to play and you can get into um, NVIDIA, you can get into Game Pass, uh, Ant Arcade, I mean, all that stuff. There's like, I think, eight different streaming services that if you're a part of any of them, you can get in there and play directly just using a controller at this point, which is, is pretty dope. I don't, I don't know, you know, obviously with NVIDIA, the, the streaming service with NVIDIA, you're utilizing... Um, the, you're streaming off of NVIDIA's hardware as well. So you can probably play a lot of different games off of that. But if you're going through like something like Game Pass, I don't know how many of those games you'll legitimately be able to play just through the, the, uh, the Samsung TV based off of its hardware and stuff. I think there's going to be some differences there just based on what subscription service you're bought into, whether you're you're running off of the TV's hardware or the subscription service's hardware, like streaming through their hardware. It just depends. But you are able to just connect a controller to the TV or peripheral device to the TV and um, game that way through subscription services. That's what Gaming Hub is. And they are rolling this technology out to previous generations of TVs and stuff. So there are lists out there. You can pull it up. It'll be on the Samsung site and everything. You can look into that if you have Sam Samsung TVs. Mm. Getting some leaked specs for uh, Lenovo's handheld. We've already seen some images of it, but no real specifications. Let's look at our other search here. Um, Robocop Rogue City has been quietly delayed again to November. I'll be honest. Uh, 
while I like I think RoboCop's a cool character and everything, this game looks bleak to me. There are things about it that face value look cool, but it, it looks like it's going to get real repetitive. Everything I've seen about what they've shown off about this game makes it look like it's going to be real repetitive. And um, anybody that's played games for very long knows that if you've got something to play that doesn't make the gameplay feel fresh and interesting and um, the entire time through, if you're just doing the same thing over and over and it, it doesn't feel interesting and, and intriguing and, and you know, it, you're just going to get real bored real quick. Um, not that, I mean, don't get me wrong. A lot of games have mechanics behind them that are repetitive, but there are good ways to do games in which, it doesn't feel stale. The, the the repetitiveness doesn't feel stale. And then there are ways in which you've played games, you can play games, and, and it just feels like you're you're just playing on repeat the entire time. It, there's just nothing really interesting or um, inventive about the gameplay. And you're just, it's just, it gets real boring real fast. It's almost what I feel about what I've seen about RoboCop. And I could be totally wrong. I could be totally wrong. But what I've seen out of RoboCop Rogue City just looks like... It looks pretty bland. It doesn't look real interesting. Um, as much as I like that character. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Um, but it's delayed again, so we'll have to wait a little bit longer to see what they are actually bringing to the table in this game. I, it's definitely a game for me that I'm not looking to play currently. I would definitely say it's a game that, from what I've seen uh, gameplay-wise, trailer-wise and everything, I think it's appropriate to be a bit hesitant here until the game comes out and we get reviews about what the game feels like, how it's reviewing and stuff before you decide to throw money at it. I just haven't seen enough of it to go, yeah, this looks dope just looks kind of shallow i think one second Okay. Sorry. We already saw the uh, Avatar Frontiers of Pandora, the new trailer for that. I'm not going to dive into that anymore. Yeah, we watched that yesterday, dude. Here. You can actually sign up uh, for the gameplay and everything too. Uh, so I'll, I'll link this to you. Um, there's a link in here where uh, you can sign up for the game launch on Soul Frame's website. So we actually watched the entire 30 minute thing yesterday in the uh, news segment. Yep. There you go, man. That'll get you a, a link to their website so you can sign up for it and everything. Thanks for making sure we were aware though, dude. Appreciate it. It does. It looks pretty dope. And coming from Digital Extremes, um, I don't know if anybody hanging out has ever played any Warframe, but that's the same company that makes Warframe. Um, yeah. Yeah, you can go ahead and sign up to play it once it releases and everything, I think is what that's about. But it's got links in there to go check out their site and all that stuff, yeah. Um, 
So Digital Extremes is, um, in my opinion, one of the better examples of a company that does free-to-play games in modern gaming. Warframe has been a, uh, they just hit their 10-year um, anniversary of Warframe. The game's been a banger for a long time. Um, they do a pretty good job of holding up a nice economy in the game as far as like a premium kind of currency economy that you can actually grind out as a free to play player and everything too. So, um, there, there are things like that to get done. They're, they're really good about making sure that people that want to play free to play are able to get things done in the games as well. I think that's a really tough thing to balance, but uh, digital extremes is pretty good at it. So, um, in my opinion, um, that's another reason why people should be hyped about something like um, Soulframe. It is, it's going to be a free-to-play game. And for this community, I'm always looking for free-to-play titles for us to jump into because it uh, eliminates that obstacle of people having to worry about buying into games for us to play together. So uh, for us to play as a community, uh, enjoy games uh, in, in a multiplayer co-op kind of environment, I like finding games that are really well developed, don't have like pay to win, um, and, and we can enjoy that way. Now, I will say that my mindset for those types of games are always like, if I've gotten a good amount of enjoyment out of them, I find it appropriate to give back to the devs. So if we play Soul Frame and I'm enjoying it, then I will find some way to give a little bit of money to the developers. They'll have some kind of uh, store, some kind of shop, and um, uh, maybe some kind of, you know, they'll probably have some kind of battle pass or something like that, or just through the store or something like that. Uh, I'll find something to give back to the devs. They're a very good developer, I, in my opinion. I really like uh, Digital Extremes. I think they're great. I uh, I wanted to the reason I still had that that article up because I actually wanted to look into what their uh, site was promoting about signing up to play the game, um, and I just didn't have time to do it yesterday. So it's funny you brought that up because I still <laughs> I still have the article up as well. I don't even normally, um, I haven't looked at it either, dude, yet. Uh, let me see. Full Frames website. Oof. One second, yes. Sorry, guys. Uh, yeah, let me take a look at this real quick. Um, see if I can find it.
Um, I mean, up at the top, it says, uh, join us. And then down at the bottom, it takes you down to the bottom and it says, uh, join us, won't you? Email and Envoy title fields are required. Reserve your Envoy title and claim your Alka's eye on launch. This will be your username and soul frame. Please use letters and numbers only. We reserve the right to ban any account or username deemed offensive. So it's basically just allowing you to go ahead and create your account, um, get your username set up, try to reserve that before anybody else might be able to. So that's that's what the site is showing me, buddy. You should see this? Join us. It's right at the very top of their, their website. It also says it up here uh, behind my camera up at the top right corner. Join us. And then it takes you down to the bottom and has you uh, sign up down here. So, oh, it did. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't know. Go to Go to this site. Go to this site. It might be kind of broken in that or something. Go Go there. Go there. Try that. I mean, anytime that happens, anytime that happens, just try going directly to their website. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Sometimes these 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 articles can have broken links in them or something like that. So if that happens, your automatic response should, should be to just do a Google search of the actual game itself and go to directly to their website. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Sorry. I didn't realize that it was broken in there, potentially. <clears throat> but there you go. That should get it for you. That should get it. Just go to Soul Frame. No, no, no. No, you're good. You're good. No, I mean, that's just a learning thing, dude. That's just a learning thing for people. I think that, uh, you know, if uh, a lot of times these websites, they, they, they'll do things like that. They'll like, uh, oh, hey, here's a hyperlink. This should take you here. But it'll be broken and it doesn't actually take you where it's supposed to or whatever. But that doesn't mean that that site isn't available. It just means that you're getting redirected to like the uh, like that article's base website or whatever. You know what I mean? So um, just to have that automatic response of going, oh, well, that link might be broken or redirecting in, uh, you know, not correctly, incorrectly, then just look up the game. Just look up the game or look up what whatever it's supposed to be redirecting you to to see if if there is in fact that site. You know what I mean? That's just one of those learning things, dude. You don't need to apologize. Yeah. Yeah. We're all good. The only reason I, I, I didn't even click on that link, I just I just typed in soul frame, dude. <laughs> I didn't even click on that link right then. I just went up there and, and did a, a quick like soul frame. Google search and it pulled up their site and I just clicked on it. I was like, Oh yeah, it's right there. So that's the only reason I knew dude. Yeah. You're we're all good, buddy. Yeah. But yeah, I'm planning on signing up too, dude. Cause I'm pretty excited about that. I would love to play it with a community and everything. The game looks sick. It does. It looks really, really good. In my opinion. And being free to play, man, means a lot of us can probably get in there and play it together and everything, which would be dope. Here's the thing. Yeah, yeah, I keep seeing these these articles about Frontiers of Pandora, and they're like, hey, it looks so good. And you, you know, it's like, all right, dude. Um, I'm already seeing a lot of comparisons to like things like <clears throat> Far Cry. So Avatar... Far Cry of Pandora. <laughs> Maybe it won't feel like that, but there's, it's quite possible that Avatar will feel like Far Cry. It's it's being made by Ubisoft, right? And not that that's necessarily a bad thing, but it could just be Far Cry skinned with Avatar stuff, right? Um, there will probably be some differences for sure, but it could also feel very, very Far Cry. Now, just because the graphics are dope doesn't mean it's going to be a fun game. Games are about having fun. And just because it looks cool and looks good doesn't mean it's going to be a great gameplay experience. I think that's one of the things 
uh, you know, for me is, is, is I'm, I get so tired of, oh, it looks so good. And it's like, yeah, but if it, if it performs bad or if the implementation of the gameplay mechanics is terrible, it doesn't matter what it looks like. Cause it's going to feel terrible. You know, it's not going to be a fun experience. And so this game has been delayed a number of times. Um, I'm also worried about like, Even if the game is decent, even if the game is decent, how many people actually still have a lot of interest in diving into the world of Avatar? Is there that much? Are there that many people that are really still that that interested in in the the world of Avatar? I feel like they missed their opportunity with this. To be fair, this should have released with the movie. I think a lot of the Avatar hype died down years ago. I think that it it got a bit bigger with the release of Avatar this past December, which is when this was supposed to release as well. They really missed the mark, though. If they really wanted to get people in here and and, and try to, you know feed off the hype uh, around Avatar, they needed to release this back whenever the movie released as well. The movie's already been out for three quarters of a year now. That hype train has really fallen off, dude. I, I think they missed the... Uh, they missed where they had the opportunity to really uh, play off of the, the hype here. and I don't know. Even if the game's decent, I feel like they they're going to maybe not garner nearly as much attention and and um retail sales as they could have had they released this when they should have. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm glad they didn't release it if it wasn't ready, right? Because we don't want to see companies doing that kind of thing, but um they obviously didn't give themselves enough time to get this game done correctly in order to release it coinciding in parallel with when the movie released, right? And that feels bad for the for Ubi as a developer, man. Yo, random out time. Yo, uh, Davey, I really do appreciate... <laughs> God dang it, dude. I really do appreciate you uh, trying to make me aware of the, uh, the Soul Frame stuff because uh, we hadn't seen anything. I said this yesterday. I was like, dude, we haven't seen anything in a long time on this. And um, I don't normally take... Like that 30 minute trailer, it was a long trailer. It was a long gameplay showcase. And I don't normally take that long, but I was pretty hyped about it. And uh, so we took 30 minutes, man, and watched that trailer yesterday. I don't normally do that because it, it's a chunk of time, dude. And um, that's definitely, that's the kind of stuff that uh, I, I really appreciate people bringing um, to my attention, just in case I have missed it. You know what I mean? Or just in case uh, we, we've, failed to come across it in our search for articles and stuff. So I really do appreciate you trying to make sure that, that we were aware of it, buddy, for sure. <laughs> we're on the same level here, it seems. Davey, yeah, dude. <laughs> so, I don't know. We watched the trailer for Avatar. It does look good. But devs are also going to show you what they want you to see, right? We'll find out when it releases. No doubt about it. Immortals of Avium is it, uh, just about what you would expect out of an EA game. We've already seen it. We've seen the reviews. Well, we'll pull it up real quick. You want to see? Um, there you go. Magic Call of Duty uh, has received a 67 meta score on PC and a 4.2 user score of 24 ratings. Okay. Um, on PS5, it's a 71 meta score and a 5.0 user score. And on Xbox Series X, it actually is up at a 77 on Xbox Series X. Interesting. Um, so if you take all of these across the board, you're probably sitting somewhere around a, a 7 out of 10. That's going to be a... Now that's critic review. User scores, you're at about a five. User scores, 
are at about a 5 out of 10. That's pretty bad. So if you take the user scores, you mash those up with the meta scores, you're going to be sitting somewhere probably around a 6, a 6 out of 10. It's going to be a pretty forgettable experience, I think. Nothing that, it, this is what I've been telling people. This is an EA game. So in about six months, this is going to hit on EA Play. If you're really interested in playing this game, you're going to get about 20 hours of gameplay out of this game. That's that's what you'll get. Sorry, but for me, um, I don't want to pay $70 for 20 hours worth of gameplay. You know what I mean? Um, oh, nice, Davey. All right, dude, let me know how it goes. Um, yo, you, you got past the, uh, obviously, the... Uh, the Guardian and everything, right? We were talking about yesterday. Was it? Did you get through it fairly, fairly easy, or what? Um. So, the the deal with with Immortal, Immortals of Avium, okay? Um, let's let's pause that. That's kind of distracting for me. Again, everybody is bound to have their own experience with the game. The reviews are a great baseline for us to uh, get a pretty good general idea of, of roughly what we are going to experience out of a game. Doesn't mean it's exactly what you're going to, going to experience, though. And if this seems like a game that you would maybe perhaps want to try out, it looks interesting to you, by all means, give it a shot. But please, do yourself a favor. A game that's rated like this doesn't deserve a AAA price tag. A game like this doesn't deserve to be supported with AAA retail purchases, in my opinion. This is an EA game, published game, EA published game, meaning that in about six months, it'll probably hit EA Play. EA Play is also something you get out of Xbox Game Pass. Ultimate. I think you have to have Ultimate, right? So... But still, I mean, we're talking about like a, a what, 15 to six, or well, like 16 to $17 price tag for Game Pass for a month of Game Pass Ultimate, right? Um, at the very most, you would be paying 16 to $17 for a month. You could play this game and then try out other games as well after this game releases on EA Play. So just do yourself a favor. And... I think that that's the better way, the, the more bang for your buck you're going to get out of your money. Uh, this game, I don't feel like is worth owning. It's not worth purchasing retail. So um, rather than spending 60 to $70, you can spend 16 or $17 in about six months. And um, well, about five months now. Um, no, nah, no, no, no. It released on the 22nd. It only released a week ago. So about six months, six months. And um, you'll be able to try this game and any other game that may be on Game Pass at the time, right? Which usually there are a plethora of really good games out there that that you'd want to give give a shot, right? So I think that is, in my opinion, the best way. If this does seem like something you might want to try out, uh, that's the best way you could go about giving it a shot. It's not worth a AAA price tag, man. Let's Let's be real honest here. It's really not. So, in my opinion, hold off. Do yourself a favor. Get the most you can for your money. You'll be able to try this game and a plethora of other games for $17 rather than paying $60 to $70 for a very subpar experience, okay? A long fight. <laughs> May not finish this one before leaving for work. So sorry, right, dude. I got faith. You got this, dude. I'm sure work will understand if you're a little bit late. You show up and be like, sorry, boss. <laughs> I was tied up with King Boreas, you know? <laughs> I'm sure they'll understand, dude. Just to give a, a, another, a, you know, a, so, another look at Immortals of Avium. It's at 70% of 350 user reviews on Steam now. So that's not far off from the critic reviews. You, it, it's probably going to be a, a pretty... S 
I would say for most people, most people, subpar to mediocre experience. It's definitely not going to be anything that is mind blowing or real memorable or anything like that. More than likely. Okay. <clears throat> so I'll stick by what I said. Oh, they got Steam Strategy Fest going on now, dude. Nice. Oh, all you Strat fans, dude. They got on sale. Oh, uh, War Tales is on sale, dude. I wonder if Psycho played any more of this. I really want to try War Tales. <clears throat> I'm getting distracted. I'm sorry. War Tales. Let's see what the ratings are on this now. 90% positive, over 17,000. This game looks dope. This game looks really cool. It's multiplayer. This game looks sick, dude. I need to talk to Psycho. See if we played any more of this. Oh, okay. Let's keep going. We already talked about this as well. Sony bought the uh, headphone uh, company, headphone manufacturing company, Adiz. That was a few days ago. Switch has now overtaken the Wii in lifetime sales in the U.S. Both amazing consoles, by the way. Very inventive. Groundbreaking for, for game the gaming industry. No doubt about it. GameStop sale includes one of the best PlayStation games for $3. Let's take a look. Rebel Moon. Just call it Star Wars, okay? It is. That's what it is, dude. <laughs> Tears of the Kingdom's uh, discounted to $50 today, guys. Zowie. I mean, that is actually pretty good considering it's a $70 game uh, on the constant. Armored Core 6 is not coming to Xbox Game Pass. And that's all you need to know. DC Studios could have multiple games in development. That sounds very clickbaity. Yep. Okay, let's stick with these. Uh, GameStop sale includes one of the best PlayStation games for $3. Uh, one of the all-time great PS4 games is Dirt Cheap for a limited time. What are we talking about here? Uh, Uncharted 4, A Thief's End. Um, $3. Pre-owned. Pre-owned. This will be for a pre-owned copy of Uncharted 4, A Thief's End. You can get that for 3 What is it? 3 or $4? 3 $3. $3. Uh, this is supposed to be a very, very good game, though. So if you're interested, here you go. There's your link. What you need to know. Death or Glory, a unique blend of C CG and fighting games. Death or Glory is an upcoming Steam adventure that combines the mechanics of collectible card games with the high-energy action of fighting games. Developed by Distilled Gaming Company, this game offers a captivating and visually stunning experience that will put your... Skills to the test. In Death or Glory, players embark on a solo campaign reminiscent of Slay the Spire. Fully animated and filled with intense dueling sh uh, showdowns. We good? I think we're good. Uh, the game features five different classes, namely Warrior, Monster, Spellslinger, Evangelist, and Techie. 
Each class comes with its own resource systems and playstyles, offering players a wide range of options and strategies. One of the key features of Death or Glory is its ever-changing levels. Each time you play a level, it can change drastically. What was once a treasure trove of rewards may suddenly become a desolate and challenging battlefield. Modifiers add an extra layer of difficulty, making every playthrough a unique and chaotic experience. Furthermore, Death or Glory offers multiplayer gameplay, allowing players to compete against their friends for bragging rights. Closed beta taking place from September 1st through September 4th offers a taste of this multiplayer feature. Players can engage in duels or play through parts of the roguelike campaign and even receive an exclusive skin for the werewolf character, Red Eye. With its release date set for the quarter three of this year, which is, we're there, uh, Death or Glory is quickly approaching. If you're intrigued by this unique blend of CCG and fighting games, you can wishlist the game on Steam. Okay. Death or Glory, huh? Let's take a look at this. Let's see what we got here. Hmm. That's a flipping banger. Get you woke up this morning. Yeah. Or game. God, bro. Uh, I just got Gamba. I just got uh Gamba as my rando mode, dude. Random mode just happened, by the way, dude. Yeah, it's like uh ma max uh mashup of like CCG and fighting game. Apparently, I'll link it, dude. I'll link it. What is that, bro? Huh? <laughs> no, I haven't seen that one. Nice. Demo available now. Check it out. There you go if you're interested. Music was sick. Um, leaked specifications for Lenovo's rumored handheld gaming PC. We've already seen images and everything, but let's see what uh, they're talking about. Uh... Stat wise for hardware, ruin some tea. Let's go, bro. Yeah, dude. According to recent leaked specifications for the rumored handheld gaming PC by Lenovo, allegedly named a Legion Go, have been revealed. Legion Go is expected to feature powerful hardware with an AMD Ryzen Z1 Extreme processor leading the way. Reportedly set to make its debut on September 1st at IFA, the Lenovo Legion Go will sport an impressive 8.8 inch. 2560 by 1600 display with a 144 hertz refresh rate. This high resolution display is sure to provide a stunning visual experience for gamers. That's a really good display, dude, on a handheld. Similar to the Asus ROG Ally, the Legion Go will operate on the newly released Windows 11 operating system. Lenovo is likely to incorporate its own software to optimize user experience, allowing for easy navigation without the need for a mouse or a keypad, or keyboard, I mean. Um, isn't the Z1 Extreme the same that the ROG Ally has in the um, the their $1,000 model, I think. Key specifications of the Lenovo Legion Go include a multi-finger touchpad, up to 16 gigs of um, LDDR5, LPDDR5X memory, and storage options ranging from 256 to 1 terabyte of uh, NVMe M.2 solid-state drive uh, storage. These hardware features promise to deliver a seamless and responsive gaming experience. Um, isn't this funny? We've got handhelds coming out with double the, the storage capacity that, uh, traditional consoles are released with. <laughs> Bro, don't, don't PS5s and, um, Xboxes come out with like 500 gigs <laughs> of storage space. Which this is probably going to cost uh, quite a bit more than those. Also, let's be fair. Let, let's let's hold off a second. But still, I mean, what sets the Legion Go apart is its unique controller design. It appears the controller and main device will have separate batteries. 
indicating the potential to use the Legion Go as a standalone tablet without the need for controllers. The controller is rumored to have a battery capacity of 900 uh, mAh, providing more ample power for extended gaming sessions. While Lenovo aims to complete the popular Steam, uh, compete with the popular Steam Deck, their decision to use Windows 11 as the operating system may pose some challenges. Windows 11 currently lacks certain features essential for handheld gaming, such as proper program suspension. Mm -hmm. In conclusion, that's one of, one of the reasons that... Because uh, doesn't um, the Steam Deck run on Linux? I'm pretty sure, right? Yeah, I mean, absolutely, Ferret. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, I mean, they have dropped uh, a lot. And I think that what, like, Xbox is running out a new version of their, was it their Series S? It's Linux for Steam Deck. Yeah, I think so. Which is a much better, because what it, what what Linux allows you to do, I mean, what, what Steam Deck allows you to do is actually run Windows if you want to. <laughs> you know what I mean? As opposed to, like, <clears throat> running an operating system like Windows, it's much harder to do the opposite, right? I mean, you, you can feel the people will be able to figure it out, but Linux is a much better, it's a much more user friendly operating system than Windows tends to be <laughs> for things like that, you know. Um, I don't have extensive um, experience with Linux, but, uh, you know, I've, I've got a little bit here and there, and Linux just tends to be a more user friendly kind of environment than. Um, windows does you know <laughs> it has been for a long time um yeah yeah so in conclusion the leak specifications of the lenovo legion go suggest it will be a powerful handheld gaming pc with a high res display top-notch hardware and innovative controller design However, the choice of Windows 11 as the operating system may limit its appeal in the highly competitive handheld gaming market. Yeah, I agreed. I also think that, <clears throat> I mean, they want to talk about a competitor to the, the uh, Steam Deck. This sounds like more like a competitor to the ROG Ally. Not that they aren't in the same realm, because these are all ROG Ally, the Lenovo, Legion Go, <clears throat> and the, the Steam Deck are all PC gaming handhelds, true handheld gaming devices. So they're going to be competitors for sure. But the Steam Deck is more consumer-friendly price point, right? Whereas with the Legion Go, with what it looks like they're putting in hardware-wise, is something much more comparable to something like the um, ROG Ally. And the ROG Ally is a $900 or $1,000 price point as opposed to the Steam Deck, which is a roughly $400 to $600 price point, depending on the tier you buy into, the model you buy into. So, there's a difference there. And with the stats, the specifications that we're getting out of what this device is going to be running, um, it seems like something that's going to be more comparable to price point, probably out, out there with the ROG Ally. So, Seems as if the Steam Deck still going to have that that lower price point on lock for consumers. You know, we'll see, we'll see. But it's good to see some of these specifications coming out. And to be fair, I think that it won't be too much longer before we see the next version of the Steam Deck. I really don't. They've they've stated they've been working on it for a while now. Valve has, and um. I don't think, I think they'll maintain the price point range that they've been at. So we probably won't see anything as elaborate hardware wise as the Legion Go or the ROG Ally, but it will be closer because it'll just be more modern, you know, whereas both the Legion Go and the ROG Ally are more modern uh, by a couple of years, at least hardware wise than the uh, Steam Deck is, right? But it's good to get some stats on this for sure. <clears throat> the one thing I will say, whenever the Steam Deck was coming out, whenever the Steam Deck was coming out, I was like, why are they not copying Nintendo and doing removable controllers? Disconnecting controllers. 
Because, dude, the the switch, I think uh, that's such an, a, a, an incredibly inventive and great idea to do with that that platform. And I've literally seen almost nobody else copy that. The Lenovo Legion Go is doing it. Steam Deck didn't do it. ROG Ally didn't do it. But Legion Go is doing it. So the controllers are uh, detachable, like they were just talking about. And that's something we haven't really seen yet. Patent? I don't know. I don't know. I'm not sure. But, I mean, Lenovo's doing it. You know what I mean? Um, I think, here's the thing. Patents quite often are circumvented through if, you know, can you come up with your own technology to get it done? You know what I mean? Um, they could have paid the patent pricing. It's also a matter of, do you want to pay the patent pricing to use the same exact technology to get that piece of technology incorporated into your device? Or do you want to engineer it yourself? Because there's there's ways to serve there are like loopholes and stuff right if you're engineering it yourself sometimes you can like loophole through it because it's like well we didn't copy them this is our own tech you know what i mean if you're engineering the mechanical and the software side of it and everything then sometimes you can like loophole it and maybe they did that so they i, I don't know i don't know <clears throat> i'm not sure what lenovo did here um it, look i'm guessing from Nintendo, the patent that they have on the Switch's detachable controller stuff is probably astronomical. What they want people to pay for it. You know what I mean? <laughs> they want that on lock. They don't want other companies taking that, you know? So we know how Nintendo is. <laughs> um, so I would be surprised if Lenovo was able to buy into being able to use this, the Nintendo technology for the detachable controllers. I'm guessing Lenovo probably engineered it themselves and they're able to prove that this is not the same technology that Nintendo is using for their device as well. That's probably what's happening here because otherwise, dude, they would have had to probably pay a large chunk of money. But I don't know either. I'm not, you know, I'm not that familiar or educated on the business side of that stuff you know i don't really know how that that plays out and um my assumption would be that they they probably engineered it and developed it themselves but i, I really don't know do i don't know but i have wondered i have wondered for a long time like why isn't anybody else trying to develop this themselves because it's such a great piece of technology you know what i mean the detachable controller thing is flipping amazing. It's really, really good. And to see Lenovo, if you haven't seen, have you guys seen the Lenovo uh, Go images? Check this out. Um, They're doing something Nintendo didn't do. Ah, <laughs> oh, man, they're not showing us. Uh, hold on, hold on. Go here. Look at these things, dude. Look at these things. They've got curves. <laughs> they're ergonomic, dude. Holy crap. It's like they're made to fit in an actual human hand. Yeah, that's one of the things that we've heard of uh, about too is that this is a beefy device. So this is not a, a, this is a device they're talking about probably has a very large battery in it. Uh, so not just the controllers, but the device all the way around is chunky, which for me is fine, dude. That, uh, I, I'm not against chunky. I like something that feels solid. I want something that feels solid in my hands. You know what I mean? I like that. Some people don't. But for me, dude, I love that. And um, you can see there's there's some stuff that we noted when we first saw this. And um, whenever we first came across this, weight could be an issue if you, if you have to hold for a long time. But that, again, that's something that's going to be respected for each individual person too. You know what I mean? So um, I think it just depends. It just depends. 
And, and there's going to be a, definitely a fine line to walk there, right? You, you don't. You definitely don't want something that's ten pounds. You know what I mean? I don't want to hold something that's ten pounds for very long. You know what I mean? Um, but if you can increase the weight a little bit, get a better battery in there. That's a huge thing for a handheld, right? A handheld device having as big of a battery as you can put in there, obviously, is going to make it way more. But you're going to get a lot more. Um, off plug time than uh, some of these other ones that are being uh, on the market right now, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm just trying to curl in while I'm playing games, Doc. <laughs> uh, bro, I was curling my Lenovo Legion Pro. <laughs> <laughs> Living, looking like Popeye, dog, doing wrist curls. With my Lenovo Legion Go, you know? <laughs> if you notice, though, dude, there's a lot of buttons on these controllers. There's like, uh, there's even like a, like a, 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 a wheel, like a radial, like wheel up here. Um, weirdly enough, you've got like some um, back bumper button kind of, uh, these two on this side are in a um, horiz or a, a vertical position, while the two on this controller are in a vertical position. Um, and then you've got other things uh, like I'll try to. Do they show the? This is yeah, yeah. Check this out. It's got a kickstand, which is dope. You know what I mean? Uh, which is awesome, man. Just for like not even needing to dock it, you just kickstand it. This is part of the back of the uh, the device. You can just take the controllers off, kickstand it, and just hang out and play. You know, that's sick. Uh, but you can see these are like bumper buttons, right? So look how many buttons th this flipping thing has on it. Triggers, bumpers. Then down here is also uh, other flipping buttons off of the bumpers. Then you've got the, uh, the back buttons on the controller. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, dude, kickstand has been something on mobile devices for a long time. People have known that like mobile devices needed kickstands for a long time. So it's not, yeah, they they could have looked at this. I mean, it's not like, dude, so, so, so is the detachable controller thing. You know what I mean? So you emulate things that are done very well by other companies, right? And so whether they took it from Nintendo or they just looked at the fact that, you know, whatever, it's smart. You know what I mean? Um but there are also these little buttons um, like down here on the side. Yeah, for sure, dude. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, the other thing I noted was like, these look like ports on the top. That's a USB-C for sure. I can't, I can't zoom in a whole lot here without it going nuts. But um, power button, that's probably a three millimeter phone, uh, headphone jack. Audio jack. I'm guessing, dude. I don't know if these are just vents or actually like USB ports. These could just be USB ports, but the sides of them look a little bit weird in this image. Um, they look like maybe USB ports. That's USB C. Um, look like vents. Yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking too. Um, so there's a lot to pull out from these images. We saw this this article previously and i was trying to kind of like pull out some of the things from it you know but i think it's they're on the right track here you know what i mean um i like i like the look of it do i, I do nintendo if nintendo doesn't do similar to this with their next device with the detachable controllers making them more ergonomic dude i don't know what nintendo's thinking you know um yeah that's what i was saying just a second ago these are actually additional buttons so You've got your your traditional bumper buttons, and then the sides of them have buttons as well. My here's my issue. This is a lot of flipping buttons, and if there's the potential to be hitting things accidentally, so you want to be able to dis disable these as necessary. You know what I mean? Whether it be these back ones or these on the side where your hands are wrapping around, you know what I mean? They could come in handy uh, for certain games at certain times, what have you, but you also want to be able to disable these 
functionally uh, very seamlessly, right? Um, Could be something like that. Absolutely. Yep. Absolutely. Yep. I was kind of thinking the same thing. Um, So we'll just have to wait and see, you know, but it does seem like they're, uh, the, the, I think here's, here's the big thing. One of the other big things that, that is going to determine how well this device does, because right now it seems great. It seems really good, but how consumer friendly is it, right? Steam Deck's very consumer friendly. So is the ROG Ally. It's, it's a very, they're very easy devices to work on. They've got good uh, warranties and service plans and stuff like that. Could be, yeah, it could be stuff like that. Yep, yeah. Um, but that's what I was kind of saying, was like whatever whatever you're going to be able to use them for, to be able to um, engage them, set them up, macro them, or just turn them off or whatever, having a system set up to do that very seamlessly and easy is going to be clutch because there's going to be a lot of times where you're playing on these controllers uh, just naturally with them plugged in like this, like, like actually docked into the, the device where you're going to be accidentally hitting stuff with your, your hands just gripped on. Right. So whether you want them engaged, like maybe just one of these buttons or all of these four and none of these two, or just, you know what I mean? Just depending on the orientation stuff, you know, it's going to be, that's a lot of buttons. It's a lot of buttons. And you're gonna want that as a, a uh, an option from a, a, from a consumer standpoint and a gamer. The con- the consumer friendly standpoint, or, or uh, you know, that's gonna determine, I think, how this is able to stack up against uh, the other PC handheld devices like Steam Deck and ROG Ally. Um, yeah, you could end up in, but that's the thing I would be worried about. Exactly. Yeah. I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to have to deal with that. Um, so the other devices we know are, are very consumer friendly. They're easily, they're easy to work on. Um, they're engineered in a way that makes it very nice for the consumer. If anything goes wrong, the, the replacement parts like buttons and things like that are, are, are very affordable. Um, things of that nature like with the the uh <clears throat> steam deck you can open it up without voiding the warranty stuff like that i think the rog ally is the same way uh rog ally is even actually better with being able to replace the battery and stuff than the the steam deck even is you know um they're engineered in ways that are very consumer friendly on those fronts and you want to see that dude from con- from manufacturers nowadays you know um so I think that for for this device to stand up comparable to the other ones, that's going to be a a big area of concern and something we have to take a real critical look at um, after it gets released. Is it as consumer friendly as the other devices are that uh, it's trying to stack up against? You know what I mean? But we'll see once it releases. We know it's getting closer and closer because we're getting more information about it. We still don't know what it's going to cost. I'm guessing with what we know stat-wise now, though, or specification-wise hardware, uh, it'll probably be somewhere really close to the uh, ROG Ally as opposed to the Steam Deck. But it looks dope, dude. It looks dope. I think I think it's very neat. We'll just we'll have to see. Diablo 4 will boost experience and gold gains this weekend, which is your chance to change things up. We've already seen where uh, Season 2 is on its way come October. Uh, they're incorporating vampires and vampire abilities, things of that nature. Um, but season one has been a pretty big letdown, I think, for most people. I mean, let's be fair. It is Blizzard, right? <laughs> yeah, I, I don't think you can really expect too much from Blizzard. Come on, guys. You know, uh, not, not you know, nowadays. Uh, back in the day, maybe you know, long time ago, but you know, you, we just have to know who, who Blizzard is nowadays. And, and if you uh, go into anything uh, from Blizzard expecting too much, you're just bound to get let down. Uh, D4 will boost the amount of golden experience you can earn starting this Friday, which gives you the perfect opportunity to try and build a, a new class. Try a new build or class if you're not already planning to marathon Starfield, that is. 
during Diablo 4's Mother's Blessing weekend, you'll earn 25% more experience and gold, neither the Eternal or, se or seasonal, seasonal Realm. Uh, seasonal characters can combine this with the 8% Seasonal Experience bonus from the D4 Battle Pass as well. You don't have to do anything to take advantage of the boosted experience and, and gold. You just log in, receive the buff on your character until the event ends. Um, this is when it kicks off for each time zone. I'll link this for you guys. Yeah, this D4 Season 1 has about a month left before the vampire-themed Season 2 arrives. Like I was talking about. All right. Well, if you've been playing D4 at all a little bit, or maybe you were interested, uh, maybe now is a good time to get in there and get some uh, additional experience in gold. All right. Um, all right. So here, let's hit these. We'll, we'll end on the Starfield stuff. How about that? PlayStation Plus members can get two new free games right now. All right. Um, PS Plus Essential Tier subscribers can currently grab the following. PGA Tour, 2K23, Dreams, and Death Store. We've already talked about this, man. Yeah. So, uh, as of today, this was... Today. Um... Two free games that absolutely demand your attention. Both are available now for PlayStation Plus Extra subscribers. First one uh, is Sea of Stars, which Gaming Bible gave a 9 out of 10 in a newly published review, calling it retro-flavored perfection with a modern twist. Um, quote, Sea of Stars may come across to some as little more than a tribute act to the classics, but I hold no truck. With such sniffy dismissiveness, I wrote, uh, if it is a tribute act, it's definitely more UK Pink Floyd experience than your mate's crabby pub band that plays Arctic Monkeys covers. <laughs> All right. Uh, it's available now to download on Game Pass and PS uh, Plus Extra. And uh, this author cannot recommend it enough. Uh, the second game is Lawn Mowing Simulator Landmark Edition, which obviously couldn't be more different than a classic RPG about saving the world from ancient evil. Still, if you've had your fill of fighting the forces of darkness and would rather kick back with something more meditative, meditative, excuse me, clearly this game would be the better of the two choices. Isn't that variety what makes gaming such a fantastic medium? So, Sea of Stars and uh, Lawn Mowing Simulator, now available on um, PS Plus. And Sea of Stars is also on Game Pass, all right? If you need more, here. There you go. Uh, Escape from Tarkov will share progress with Arena Spinoff. Uh, it works the other way around, too. <clears throat> so Battlestate Games announced that players' progress in Escape from Tarkov Arena, the standalone spinoff, will be shared in the main game to gain level skills and weapon mastering. This also works the other way around. Should players prefer the newer version of Escape from Tarkov's sorry, Woo! challenging combat simulation, Escape from Tarkov Arena will feature five game modes uh, at the moment. Duel, Last Hero, Overrun, Shootout, and Team Fight. Players will be able to step into roles like Sniper, Scout, uh, CQB, and Assault with presets for equipment to get straight into the action as soon as possible. EFT Arena perfectly combines the hardcore mechanics of Escape from Tarkov and fast-paced gameplay of session matches, explained Battlestate Games. The premise is that Arena pits the players against each other in gladiator fights arranged by the mysterious masters and orchestrated by the host. Details on these characters are scarce. However, the studio has shared what maps will be available in the final release. God, that foliage looks insanely good. Um, these are Air Pit, Bay 5, uh, Equator, Sawmill, The Bowl, The Box, and Resort. As they are all new additions, there will be no advantages between veteran and new escape from Tarkov players who will be dipping into the spinoff. Again, this issue is uh, circumnavigated in the new roles too. As established, players would have access to a much more adv advantageous arsenal than the newbies. Um, additionally, it's possible that more roles are in the works to reinvent the meta as players get to grips with the game. Okay, 
No release date yet. Latest uh, info seems to suggest the team is readying up for a, a reveal of some sort. Okay. All right. If you need anything out of this here. All right. We've got a couple of uh, Starfield articles to end the new segment for today. Okay. Um, here's details on the first Starfield early access patch. Okay. Um, Insider Gaming has learned details of the first Starfield patch when the game hits early access on Xbox Series X and S and Steam. The update update titled Starfield 1.7.23, uh, 23, excuse me, includes a number of fixes across the game as well as the addition of the virtual keyboard for those playing on Steam Deck. Speaking of the Steam Deck, the document Insider Gaming received torches. Oh, excuse me. I thought it said torches. Touches on compatibility. <laughs> Starfield will run on both the Steam Deck and the ROG Ally with the correct drivers, but the hardware, be hardware below the recommended minimum specs and performance may suffer, it says. Um, it goes through uh, all the fixes right here. I'm not going to read all these off, but there's some performance and stability fixes, visual fixes, gameplay fixes, and quest fixes. Just about every game that, that gets go. So, so this is this is the way this works, right? What about the pitchforks? Yeah, that's true. What's up, Psych? Um, every game that releases goes gold, right? There's a, there's a period of time where uh, roughly a month to two months before it releases, it, it, it's what's called going gold, yeah? Where it's in the final release version. Um, but it's not like the studio quits working on it, right? So... That's the version that starts getting printed on physical copies for consoles. Um, it's the version that they start uh, preparing for release, basically, right? And it takes something absolutely catastrophic to delay the release of that version of the game. Now, they do continue to work on patching uh, up until the release of the game. So that's basically what this is, right? So even though... Most people haven't gotten to play this game yet. There are some, um, which would, are mostly um, like early copies that have been pushed out with non-disclosure agreements to like critics uh, so they can do reviews and things like that. Or there are some people that are currently facing felony charges for uh, finding copies of this in warehouses they worked in and then selling it for astronomical prices on the black market and uh, also pushing out uh, information about the game when they weren't supposed to. We've already touched on that. But um, this is basically what happens. They, uh, they, the, the developer keeps working on the game. They get like day one patch versions ready. That way, issues that they have come across since the game went gold, since that, that gold release version of the game had been pushed out, the other issues they've found um, or knew they needed to continue to work on, um, they, they get that stuff patched out. That way, when the game releases, they, it gets patched right away, right? That's basically what this is. So there's, this is some of the more uh, notable stuff they've gotten patched up at this point. Again, early access hits on the 1st of September for uh, anybody that bought into versions of the game for early access. And then the uh, September 6th is the default release date for base game, okay? But I'll link this if you want to take a look at this, okay? Yeah, get the pitchforks, dude. Here we go. Now, moving on, talking about performance. This is the last article I have for today, by the way. If anybody has anything to add, let me know and we'll address it before we move on and play. Uh, what could possibly be our final day of Blasphemous 2? Um, we'll see, we'll see. But we're definitely pushing... Um, towards the latter part of the game, and uh, it's been great. Uh, if the second game, if if how long it took us to get through the first game is any indication as to how long it will take us to get through the second game, we would be on par for finishing this game up today towards the end of the stream probably, but we'll see how it goes, okay? We'll see how it goes. Um, Starfield performance leak is bad news for PC gamers. Well, Starfield performance leaks for PC are dividing players as they navigate the mixed feelings of flagging CPUs, potentially needing better tech, and whether the hype for the game is well-placed. 
Before we dive into the latest leaks, suggest anyone who wants to experience the game fresh without any external factors influencing guiding them, leave this article alone. Although we're not about to go into great detail and spoil things for you, my words will undoubtedly give you insight into what PC fans can expect, according to these two leaks. So once again, I say turn back now if you want a clean slate. Hmm. The PC performance leaks dropped on Reddit in spectacular style with thorough commentary, videos, and opinions from the two leakers in question. I want to start by saying that according to the details we have, the initial findings from these players are positive. Quote, performance is smooth uh, in IMO, in my opinion. Haven't touched settings too much. No stutters as well. They shared. Game is pretty good. Game of the game of the year nominee for sure. What do they had like two hours in it? Maybe more, but okay, we'll see about that. But why must there always be a but? Um, there are some issues that are causing PC gamers to worry about Starfield. Primarily, that it'll eat CPUs. Assuming you're not already upset by the lackluster visuals, as one disgruntled redditor described the graphics, reportedly the game runs between 45 and 60 frames per second with the latter and normally reachy, reached when traversing dungeons. Still, for a lot of gamers, this isn't what they want to hear, despite them knowing that only top-end tech will suffice when running a game as big as Starfield. Bro, I'm hoping the best for my 1080. I'm completely okay with 1080p, but it needs to be at least 60 frames on medium-high. Said, uh, Dude man dudeify in response to all the different videos uploaded on the thread. Thing is though, that 60 frames per second might be wishful thinking. As Rod Thrashcock explained, King, I don't know if you're going to get your 60 frames per second wish. I've got a 30, 60, and I'm just praying for a solid 30 frames at high settings. While the naysayers are having a field day with this bad news, others are much more optimistic, like user professional way 4977. Quote, with those settings at that res, with those specs, even when using FSR, I think is uh, overall some pretty impressive performance, especially coming from Bethesda, especially being a game for PC in 2023. Make a valid point. Bethesda is known for slightly janky games. We love those games, warts and all, but they'll never really be the most polished when uh, compared with other titles. If nothing else, Starfield is proof the devs have really pushed the boat out to make a stellar sci-fi RPG, and for the most part, it seems to have paid off. Yeah, I mean, dude, it's so hard to tell right now, okay? <clears throat> we are uh, a couple of days away from the early access release. That's when we're going to get the real good data out of how the game is performing, okay? Um, oh, and uh, if to make matters worse, ba basically... Uh, Data mining has already confirmed that the game has no uh, XESS or DLSS upscaling technologies in it. Only uh, AMD's FX super resolution is supported. Oh, wow, dude. That's going to feel bad for a lot of people. Yeah, that's going to feel bad. Hmm, interesting. Interesting. So, I mean, look. Um, it will feel bad for people. If you're not able to get a, a, like a stable 60 frames, if you're running a solid rig, I'm not talking about like a potato rig. You know what I mean? Or, or a, uh, you know, a pretty low spec uh pc you know something mediocre mid-range if you if you're if you're running a mid-range uh pc all the way around you know and and you're still not able to have a, a steady 60 frames while playing this game it's going to feel bad it will um large in part because of the genre But especially if it plays very well, here's the, here's the thing we talk about a lot, right? If this game, um, a PC running on potato batteries, <laughs> yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure <laughs> there's got to be somebody out there that's done that kind of thing. You know what I mean? There's got to be images. Um, 
so as we've we've seen so often in the past and so many times over the past year as well if this game releases and it plays really well on console being xbox and then it plays subpar performance wise on pc there's going to be a lot of pissed off people and rightfully so because what it's going to tell everybody is that <clears throat> bethesda focused on the console version of this game made sure it ran very well and they neglected optimizing the game for pc which we see happen all too often right um so some of what I've seen information wise already leads me to believe this might kind of be the case. I hope not. I really, really hope not. Um, the fact that Bethesda didn't have to focus on anything else besides Xbox consoles and PC, um, they didn't have to worry about Switch, Nintendo, they didn't have to worry about PlayStation or anything like that. It was just those platforms. If that's what they did, and this feels like a port to PC from uh, the Xbox console, it's gonna feel terribly bad for uh, all PC gamers. It's gonna be a pretty big letdown. I hope that's not the case. We're gonna find out soon enough. It wouldn't surprise me either, Ferret. Not one bit. It doesn't mean it's gonna feel any less bad though. That's why I'm, I'm trying to bring it up right now because from some of the things that I'm, I'm, I'm getting the inkling this might be the, 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 uh, the case i just want to be prepared for it i'm not playing this game on release because i'm too scared of it uh being bethesda i don't trust bethesda anymore um and this is kind of my let's see how bethesda can do so can they get back in our good graces can they still do what they you know can they can they do decent here or, or are they just going to push me even further away from them you know what i mean um but We see it happen all the time, unfortunately. And um, I wouldn't be surprised if this was the case here either. I really, really hope not. I really hope not. But just trying to prepare for the fact that might be the case, unfortunately. We'll see. We'll see very, very soon. Couple of days. Couple of days, man. Yep. Let's get some tunes popping off here. <clears throat> what are we listening to? No. Meow. That's <laughs> the name of this one. Let's go. Um, great news segment, man. Thanks, guys. Good to see everybody. Hope, you're, uh, hope your Tuesday's going well, man. Um, we're going to go play some Blasphemous 2. Uh, this is quite possibly going to be the last day. That's what we're going to go do right now. We're going to spend the rest of the day playing video games as we do. Um, appreciate all the input and, uh, everybody hanging out for the news segment as always, man, it was a good time, but, uh, I don't know if anybody got to check this out today live or, uh, maybe if you're getting to watch it later on as a VOD on either the, uh, Twitch channel or YouTube, we got all our previous video gaming news segments, as well as basically all the other content we do, all of our gameplay playthroughs, um, in playlist segmented out into each episode um as well as funny wild crazy bizarre clips and highlights of things that happen uh here in the channel all that content man is is out there uh on both of our our channels man for the uh the twitch and uh youtube so check that stuff out if you're enjoying it come hang out with myself and the rest of the amazing people that make up our community here when we go live uh six days a week Normally six days a week. We're uh, uh, 6 a.m. CST, CDT. We kick it off with video gaming news. This week's a little bit different. Normally I take Wednesdays off. Uh, don't forget, this week uh, I will be live tomorrow. Wednesday I will be here. But uh, I'm taking this coming weekend off. A uh, little into summer thing to spend with family. So Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, uh, no live stream. So uh, I'll be here tomorrow when I normally wouldn't be. And then this weekend, no live streams when I normally would be streaming. So, <laughs> so don't forget. But uh, other than that, you know, you guys stay healthy, stay safe, be kind. And uh, we will catch everybody tomorrow for uh, August 30th edition of Video Gaming News. All right. <laughs>